this video, I'm going to review statistics that you might find on a college mathematics CLEP exam. I will start with some definitions and then cover some example problems. So for a few definitions, you know, I'll start with a mean. I mean, it's just the average of a set of numbers. You just add them all together and divide how many they are. If you had a weighted mean, you would multiply the value times its weight, times each of them, and then you would add them together. And for the median, this is just the middle of the set of numbers arranged from least to greatest. If there are two numbers in the middle, you would take the average of those two numbers. So if you have an odd number of numbers, you will have one in the middle but if you have an even number of numbers, you have two in the middle, and you have to take the average of those two numbers in the middle. The mode, this is just simply the number that appears the most. If you have more than one number that appears the same amount of times, you have more than one mode. But if all the numbers have the same uh, frequency, then there's no mode. So the range, this is just the measure of spread of the data set. This is calculated by taking the highest value minus the lowest value. And then a standard deviation, this is the measure of how spread out the numbers are in the data set. You see this formula here, the summation of x minus mu, which is your data point minus your mean, squared, divided by n, number of data points, and then the square root of that whole thing. So if your numbers are really spread out, your x minus mu will be quite large. And then take the square of that, and then you divide by n, take the square root, that'll make your standard deviation uh, bigger. So the more your data points are spread out from the mean, the higher your standard deviation will be. If they are closer together, then your standard deviation will be a lot smaller. And now we have the five number summary. For the five number summary, that includes the minimum value, the Q1 value, the median, Q3, and then the maximum value. You can see that your min is on the end of the whisker and your max is on the end of the whisker on the right side. The lower quartile starts the box. The median is within the box somewhere. It doesn't need to be right in the middle, but it'll be within the box. And Q3 ends the box. And then your interquartile range is your Q3 minus Q1 value. What you see here is a box plot. And it plots the minimum, the Q1, median, Q3, and max values. All right, so for our first problem, it asks the difference between the mean and the median of the numbers 17, 17, 20, 22, 26, and 30 is. So to find our mean, what do we do? We add up all the numbers that we have and divide by how many they are. So I'm gonna take 17 plus 17 plus 20 plus 22 plus 26 plus 30. And then divide it by, we have one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. All right, so the top becomes 132 divided by six. That's going to give us 22 for the mean. Now for the median, so these are already lined up from least to greatest. We just need to find the middle number. So I can just, you know, scratch these off at the end. And I can see that we're going to end up with 2 in the middle, 20 and 22. I'm going to take the average of those two, add them together, divide by 2. It's going to be right in the middle. It's going to give us 21. So we have 21 for our median. And the difference between those two, 22 minus 21, will be 1. So in this problem, we have to find the mean and the median. Now this one, it says, on an exam for a class of 35 students, the mean score was 79.5 points. The instructor rescored the exam by adding three points to everyone's score. 
was the mean of the scores on the rescored exams. All right, so the original average was 79.5. All right, and then everybody got three points extra. And how is that gonna affect the mean of the scores? Remember the mean is all the scores added together divided by how many there are. Now, if everybody gets three points, you're gonna end up adding three times 35 to the top, additional, and you're gonna divide by 35. So the 35 is going to cancel out, so you end up adding 3 to the original score. So you're going to have 82.5. So simply adding 3 points to everybody's score will change the mean by 3 points. This one reads, if a student has 5 test scores, 60, 72, 80, 82, and 90, and then the 60 was changed to 55, and the 90 to 95, which of the following change after the rescoring? All right, so what do we end up doing? We changed the 60 to 55, and the 90 to 95. Will that change the mean? So if I subtracted five from one and added five to the other, that's basically a net change of zero. So the top of the, the fraction did not change, so the mean would not change. The median, we changed the outer two values, so the one in the middle still stayed the same. Our mode here, we didn't have a mode because nothing appeared more than once. So our range, remember our range is our highest value minus the lowest value. So we did change our highest value from 90 to 95, and our lowest value from 60 to 55. And actually we added 10 more to the range. So our answer here is the range did change. So this one reads, the graphs below show the distribution of ACT scores of incoming freshmen at three colleges. Which school had ACT scores with the greatest standard deviation? So remember that our standard deviation is how far the data points are spread out. So the narrower the graph, that means the points are closer together. And the wider the graph is, means that data points are more spread out. So we can see here that the last one has a wider graph. So that's going to be our answer. The middle one is basically skinny. And then A is in between B and C. So C has the more varying data values that are more spread out. In this problem it reads, a student takes four tests in a math course. They are all weighted equally. The first three test scores were 80, 85, and 72. What does a student need to get on the last test to average at least an 80 on the four tests? So remember our average is just add them all together and divide by how many they are. So we know we have an 80, 85 and a 72 and we don't know the last test score so I'm just gonna put in an X for that the unknown and then we're gonna divide by 4 because there's four tests and we want our average to be an 80 so all we need to do here is solve for X so the first thing we do is multiply both sides by 4 that's gonna cancel out the 4 here all right, so now we have the 80 plus 85 plus 72. If I add those together, that gives me 237. So 237 plus X equals 320. And then subtract 237 from both sides. And then X will equal 83. So they need to get an 83 on the last test in order to get a 80 for their average. So this one says, what is the range of the given data set? Remember the range is the largest value minus the smallest value. So our largest value is 50. 
and our lowest value is 20, which will give us 30. So the range of this data set is 30. This problem it reads, what is the interquartile range of this data set? So remember, this is a box plot where the 60 is, that's our minimum value. Where the 75 is, that's our Q1. 90 is the median. 96 is Q3. And the 99 is our max value. And the interquartile range, the Q3 minus Q1, which will be 96 minus 75, which gives us 21. So the interquartile range of this data set is 21. I hope that this review of statistics will help you on your college mathematics club exam. If you like this video, remember to like and subscribe.